came in were, number one was in order to um, improve the thermal transfer of the heaters to the tin bismuth eutectic alloy, the original designers had a copper bar on the very bottom of the uh, dip ring, mm -hmm. and it turns out that uh, that corroded very quickly in that solution, and it caused uh, rotational sticking to the point that part of those copper bars fell off of and into the trough that restricted the rotation of the plugs. So before the reactor was uh, uh, fueled and before it was operated, the plugs had to be removed and those copper bars were replaced with stainless steel material and the heater configuration was changed to compensate for the lower thermal conductivity. The, there's another related problem with that in that the heaters, because the rotating plugs are eccentric, by not having a common uh, center line, it allowed the rotation of the small plug to position over any one of the reactor uh, core or uh, fuel positions, uh, but that meant that there was a space on part of the plugs where the edge of the small plug was very close to the edge of the large plug. And the heaters in that area were very difficult to get access to. This gets back to the maintenance access issue. When heaters failed in those positions, it took a significant amount of effort, uh, a significant amount of time to try to remove those heaters and replace them. Uh, the other problem that was the, um, the behavior of the tin bismuth material was such that no one anticipated in the early design that on the air side of this seal trough, when the tin bismuth was molten, it would oxidize into a very fine powder called dross that would float on the surface of the seal trough. During rotation of the plugs, the dip ring rotating relative to that dross would cause the dross to roll and through some other contaminants would cause it to uh, become almost a brake shoe. So a lot of effort and uh, access was ha had to be made through the three inch diameter holes later to be able to get in and manually remove that dross material from the air side of the um, uh, dip ring, the seal trough. A different problem occurred on the argon side, the primary tank side of this because the behavior of sodium aerosols and vapors is such that it will migrate to any, through small crevices, large crevices, it will migrate to cold areas. In the primary system, in the primary tank, the uh, seal trough was a cold spot relative to the rest of the primary tank. And sodium aerosols and vapors migrated into that area and there was an unexpected chemical reaction between the molten tin bismuth and elemental sodium that created some intermetallic compounds that had very, very high melting points, far higher than the dip ring heaters could, uh, could solve. And so, similar to what happened on the air side, there was an accumulation of deposits on the argon side of the, the seal trough that eventually built up to the point where it created a mechanical brake shoe for the rotation. And again, access had to be uh, provided to get access to that side in order to clean that. Once the problem was recognized, then there were some solutions proposed and they, they did allow the, uh, this maintenance operation to allow the plugs to continue to rotate. However, another interesting behavior happened in that cleaning the annulus space between the rotating plugs on the argon side, um, there was a fairly large annular space, which is a good design. But what happened is that the sodium deposits would accumulate in that annular space. So in addition to the top of the seal trough and in the annular spray space, you had a large surface for this brake shoe effect. So the cleaning operations required cleaning the top of the 
uh, seal trough, uh, tin bismuth alloy, and cleaning into that annulus. Thinking that was a good solution, uh, that annulus was aggressively cleaned until they found that sticking problems started to occur more rapidly after effectively cleaning this. So we finally concluded through a lot of observations, a lot of uh, discussions, and many different uh, efforts to try to find the, the cause of this new problem, it was determined that there is, uh, again, the behavior of sodium aerosols in the argon cover gas. Uh, it will create convection cells, uh, thermal convection cells, even in that narrow annular space, which would bring more sodium aerosols and vapors to the colder areas at the top of that annulus. And so what we did to solve that problem was eventually allow the deposits to accumulate and began a counterflow purge of argon, clean argon gas back down through the annulus. And that would be a good, good design consideration for any component that may have an annulus like this and rotating components would be a counterflow purge. Uh, I would advise that uh, the dip ring concept either not be used uh, because it created a lot of these maintenance uh, and operational problems or that it be very carefully reconsidered and, uh, and find design solutions to the problems we encountered. You may recall we almost shut down EBR. <laughs> yes, and, and, that was and I believe, big time. and I'd like to make one comment, uh, and this is kind of a vague memory on my point, uh, looking at some of the other reactor designs, uh, some of the later designs actually used a system where they used this uh, dip ring and trough concept, but there was another seal in addition between that and the reactor where you'd lift actually lift the plugs off this seal to rotate and then place them back down so you didn't have that annuals communicating constantly with the sodium aerosol. And I would add another comment that, uh, as Ken mentioned, uh, purging uh, these annular areas with fresh argon was very important. In fact, we started that with the primary pumps, as I recall, and that helped uh, immensely uh, limit the uh, amount of sodium oxide that was accumulating at the interface with the sodium and it would eventually cause binding of the primary pump shaft and other things. So managing sodium aerosol movement in these sodium systems is a very complicated but very important design consideration. I'd like to discuss another component that has some design issues and uh, that would be the, the cover gas cleanup system. I think I would advise that it be a it would be a good model for future use because it was a closed loop system, and it did allow multiple functions to clean up the cover gas, provide uh, cleaned argon purge gas in areas and allowed us to concentrate uh, plenum gases to uh, locate uh, breached fuel. However, within the, the CGCS system, there should be some additional design consideration for the controlled temperature profile condenser. It operated well, but there were some uh, thermal uh, control issues that were associated with it and because it contained a lot of primary sodium with cesium, uh, it was a highly radioactive component, and so both the access to that, the temperature control of that component could be improved. Otherwise, again, I say it's a good model to begin with for future designers. I would like to add one comment on uh, sodium pumps before we leave that topic. Uh, just an experience base issue. We talked about uh, the annular linear induction pumps that we've used in EBR2. Uh, the secondary sodium pump was a, an electromagnetic pump, also a horizontal uh, flat uh, electromagnetic pump, and it had a capacity of, if I remember right, about 5,000 gallons per minute. So it was a fairly large pump. 
uh, others then some early issues uh, when the reactor first started up there was some uh, issues with um, 